The more desperate Krista Freeland is to see Alberta stay in the Canadian pension plan, the more desperate we are to leave the Canadian pension plan. The finance ministers in the province had a meeting chaired by Freeland, and then Freeland generously gave us an update. Here's what she said. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Uh, today, I convened a special meeting of provincial and territorial finance ministers to discuss the Canada Pension Plan and the importance of protecting Canadians' pensions from coast to coast to coast. Remember, Alberta or the Alberta government has the mandate to serve Albertans. And so while the federal government's mandate is to serve Canadians, something which they fail to do and fail miserably at, each province has a mandate to serve the people of that province. Alberta is not meant to serve Ontario, and Ontario is not meant to serve the Northwest Territories. Those are all different provinces and territories, each with a unique demographic that votes for their particular leader to best represent them. Of course, Alberta has the right to withdraw from the CPP, should it so choose. That's the argument. There it is. We have the right to withdraw from the CPP. We have the right to leave the CPP. We want to leave the CPP, one, for economic reasons, and two, for moral reasons, and so we ought to do so. It's a legal thing to do. It's not illegal. It's not unjust. And and the sooner we do it, the better. All of the ministers recognize that today. And every single minister, including me, a proud daughter of Alberta, spoke about our respect for the people of Alberta and for the absolutely essential role that Alberta plays as an economic engine for our whole country. Two things. First, the idea that the federal government respects Alberta, respects the West for that matter, is laughable. All you have to do is look at their policies, observe their actions over the last seven or eight years, and it becomes immediately clear that they do not, in fact, respect Alberta. They do not, in fact, respect the West. And secondly, I appreciate that Krista Freeland called Alberta an economic engine of the country, precisely because that's what the government believes. Remember, an engine, although it works hard, although it produces power, doesn't think. An engine doesn't think at all. Instead, it works based on the input of an operator. And in Freeland's eyes, that operator is Ottawa. Alberta, in her eyes, in the federal government's eyes, is meant to be an unthinking machine that works as hard as it can according to the federal government's inputs, pressing on the fuel at some points, releasing the fuel at others. We're supposed to produce oil, but then not have pipelines to ship that oil. And so fundamentally, we disagree with Freeland. This idea that Alberta is an engine, it's true, it's an economic engine, but we're also thinkers where we can think for ourselves and think critically and not be beholden to an input, to an operator telling us precisely what to do. But Alberta's choice about the CPP also implicates every single Canadian. So it was important for all of us as the federal government and provincial and territorial finance ministers to be present and to discuss together what the consequences for the whole country would be if Alberta were to leave the CPP. This is a socialist argument. The entire country did not vote for Alberta's government. Alberta people, the Albertans, Albertans, we Albertans voted for Alberta's government, for the government that the majority, apparently, not apparently, the majority of us wanted. And granted to that government is the ability to leave the CPP if so, they choose. This is not a countrywide decision. This is a province's decision to make. That's guaranteed to them legally. And so it is that people in BC didn't vote for Alberta's government. People in New Brunswick didn't vote for Alberta's government precisely because, as the name implies, they don't live in Alberta. Instead, Albertans voted for Alberta's government. And under the current law, Alberta's government has a right has the opportunity, the ability to leave the Canadian pension plan. And so it's not 
for other provinces to decide. It's not for other people to decide. Instead, it's for Alberta's governments or Alberta governments alone. It's their decision to decide. What the consequences would be for people across the country, including for the people of Alberta. That includes... There are consequences. There are consequences to leaving the Canadian pension plan, and they are positive consequences. We pay disproportionately billions more into the pension plan every year versus what our pensioners receive because of our age, our income, wealth, number of years we work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just the way the Canadian pension plan is structured. Not only so, but we're told by Freeland and others in the federal government that the Canadian pension plan is a juggernaut. That is, the returns are mighty. Does anyone actually believe that? Look at the returns on one's pension. Before inflation, they're dismal. They're supremely moderate. Unimpressive at best. What, 2.5% maybe? And that's before, again, inflation. Compare it to a GIC, to a mutual fund, an index fund, etc. And we'll see that the rates of return are vastly different. And yet government still promotes this pension plan to be something magnificent and marvelous. The financial reality for a province that decides to withdraw from the CPP. And that's why I told ministers today that I would ask the chief actuary to provide an estimate of the asset transfer based on a reasonable interpretation of the provisions in the CPP legislation. Our officials will work together to define the precise taskings for this work. One of the other points that I raised in our meeting and that was raised by many other ministers was the issue of portability. The CPP allows Canadians to live and work anywhere in Canada without jeopardizing their retirement. Many ministers spoke personally in this meeting. They talked about their own lives, living and working across Canada, and they talked about the lives of members of their family and how portability had been really important. If Alberta were to withdraw from the CPP, the federal government would need to issue a regulation recognizing comparability with the CPP, and Alberta would need to negotiate complex time-consuming portability agreements with the CPP and with the Quebec Pension Plan. So Freeland's answered her own objective. New negotiations are needed. The argument from the federal government for just about everything is basically the same. It's always keep things as they are. Don't change anything. Sure, things aren't good, things aren't great, but don't change them because that would be complicated. Whereas our argument is things need to be changed. And it might be complicated, it might not be complicated, but we're prepared to plunge head forth into that change so that we might work for a better future, not only for ourselves, but also for our children. We see a vision here of Alberta. We see a vision that's full of life, full of flourishing, full of freedom, and we're going to achieve it. Furthermore, if Alberta were to choose to leave, the government of Alberta would also need to negotiate international social security agreements to ensure similar treatment of contributors who spend part of their careers abroad. So again, so be it. Like we're talking about negotiations. Freeland's government is completely inept. I would not trust them. I do not trust them with a single negotiation. That's true of most governments. But ideally, we keep those governments and those powers as close to home as possible. That way it's easiest to scrutinize them. It's easiest to watch over them and say, what are you doing? How are you negotiating? What are the deals that you're making? That's not possible when the government is literally thousands and thousands of kilometers away. As an example, Quebec has negotiated its own social security agreements with 39 countries and Canada has negotiated with 60. This would be a complex and multi-year process. And it would be taking place at a time of real uncertainty, geopolitical uncertainty, global economic uncertainty, 
around the world. Oh, and domestic uncertainty. Freeland lecturing us about uncertainty is laughable. Freeland, really. The Liberal government is going to lecture us on the importance of certainty after Bill C-69, after the last three years, after the War Measures Act, after locking people out of their bank accounts, after restricting travel, after all of those things. They're going to lecture us about the importance of certainty. If anything, this proves again a reason why we need to leave the Canadian pension plan, because the federal government has proved so generously for us time and time and time again in just the shortest span of years that they're the most uncertain government in Canada's history. So if Freeland really believes what she's saying, then she would want Alberta to leave the Canadian pension plan because it means more certainty for Albertans. I truly believe as Deputy Prime Minister and as Finance Minister of Canada that adding to that uncertainty right now is not something that would help Albertans or any Canadians. Precisely. That's why, again, we want to remove ourselves as much as possible from the federal government. And part of that means our own pension plan. The scriptures are clear, have nothing to do with what's evil. And this government is evil. Because at the end of the day, this conversation is all about the well-being and the financial security of all Canadians. Socialist. That's a socialist argument. This is about Alberta's pension plan. And that, again, is guaranteed if we want to leave the pension plan, the Canadian pension plan, in the law. It isn't an argument. There isn't a set of rules that says, well, the people of Canada have to also be financially secure and they have to be guaranteed an X amount rate of returnings or an X percent rate of returnings. No, that isn't in the law. Instead, it says a province has a right to leave the Canadian pension plan if they so choose. Full stop. That's the law. And so as a matter of fact, it is not dependent on the economic uh, consequences for all other Canadians. Since the CPP was founded nearly 60 years ago, no province has ever left. This action is unprecedented. That's not an argument. So be it. All actions at some point are unprecedented. The colonies rebelling against Great Britain, for example, in the 1770s, that's unprecedented. All actions in history, Christ going to, going to the cross, is unprecedented. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't do something. It would be very complicated and it would come at a time of great uncertainty and complexity. Protecting the pensions of every single Canadian is a priority for our government. We will always stand up for the Canada Pension Plan and for the secure and dignified retirement it provides to all Canadians. (laughs) These are not MP pensions. All you have to do is ask a pensioner, is your pension providing for you? Do you feel like you've earned healthy returns on your Canadian pension plan? You've contributed thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars over the years. And now you're earning your checks. Does it seem like a healthy rate of return? Are you happy with your rates of return? Do those pension checks provide totally for your way of life in this current economic climate? If Freeland had even an ounce of courage, which she doesn't, she would go and talk to pensioners and ask, how are you doing? How are your pensions? And then she would hear the truth, which is the pensions are garbage. The returns are not excellent, like the government claims they are, and people are struggling to live. A point I made clear in today's meeting. This is just the beginning of a national conversation and I expect to meet with my ministerial counterparts in person in the coming weeks. Thank you, and I'm happy to take your questions. I have no doubt that Freeland wants to protect the pensions. I have no doubt the Liberal government wants to protect the Canadian pension plan because it gives them an an unbelievable amount of power and control over pensioners and over would-be pensioners. Look at what they did with bank accounts, again, over the last few years. Think of what they can do with pensions. Oh, but that's unprecedented, a man might say. That's never happened in history before. But that's not an argument to say it wouldn't happen. Again, look at what our federal government is willing to do. So the more desperate Freeland becomes, 
wanting Alberta to stay in that Canadian pension plan, the more certain I am that we need to leave it. As I mentioned before, the scriptures are clear. Separate oneself from evil. Separate oneself from unrighteousness. Separate oneself from massive government, from the control of a few over the many, over the unjust, more accurately, over those who are just trying to survive. That much is clear and present. Alberta needs its own pension plan, and it needs it soon.